mean, you would have to be crazy to think a computer could be useful in a hospital. And so needless to say, the first five, six years were pretty rough until the industry caught up to where he was. And by that point, he was the industry leader. He had a big <coughs> IPO. He was able to sell his shares in the company, and he lived a very comfortable life. But living a very comfortable life, he's decided to take a tougher route than just sailing the world in a yacht. And what he did is he started the Ariel Foundation, where he wanted to uh, address the global housing crisis, if you will. Um, that's his wife, Jane, on the left. They're both the founders. And those are two of the girls that were some of the first to receive a home. And so what Tom did is he decided he wanted to redesign the way houses are built based on his experience as a software engineer. And so his leading design principles were first and foremost, the lowest cost per resident per year. And here the key is the per resident per year. And so what this means is that the conventional way to address the lowest income housing is the government has $10 million and they want to put out bids to see who can build the homes. And the question they want answered is how many homes can you build for me for this amount of money? which is not the right question to ask, because what you get when you have this is you get cheaply built homes. They don't last long. They cost a lot to, to maintain. And after 10 years, the population being served is not better off. So the way to address this is to spend a little more upfront and then have a longer lasting home, <coughs> a home that has lower upkeep, a home that performs better. And so at the core of the aerial home is a technology called the structurally insulated panel. It's a well-proven technology. It essentially has your structure in the walls, and they are these, imagine, four foot by eight foot panels that get built in a factory, shipped to the site, and erected on the site. And the key here is that they have an insulated core made out of foam that keeps the home well insulated. And the second component was to really engineer these buildings the last, choose the materials, choose the way it's put together, the way it's constructed, the way it's sealed, uh, the type of things like maybe you would put double glazed window in the houses instead of the cheaper single glazed aluminum. These are the kind of investments you make up front that lead to a greater return on your investment over the lifetime of the house. <laughs> the second was that these homes, these homes need to be globally deployable and scalable. So this is meant to be a solution that can be used anywhere. This is very similar to, I guess, the freshmen and, and juniors who are doing the Universal Home Project. And the key tenet here was prefabrication. These SIPs are made in the factory, and they're made as identically and as streamlined as possible. Uh, so all of the electrical work is done inside the factory. You want to do this in a controlled environment. You don't want to do this out in the field. You want, like I said, everything to be as variably minimal as possible. So if you're doing the same thing a lot, if you can reduce the house to its core components <coughs> and not change those, then you can be a lot more efficient when you build it. So these four foot by eight foot panels are basically the building blocks of the house. And any house you design is going to have the same structure, the same panels, just put in a different arrangement. Next, the material choices. The choices uh, the Area Foundation shows to use were steel for the SIPs. So we use a 24 gauge uh, galvanized steel to prevent from rust. And the reason for this was because uh, we needed the materials to be readily available. The steel is produced globally and it's also shipped globally. It's, a, it's an international commodity that you can find anywhere. Also, when you order these coils of steel, you can run them through roll formers and achieve a very high production rate. Second, on the right, you see the stock image of a polyurethane injection kit. And what this is, this is the core of this sandwich, this SIP panel, the insulated value, uh, comes from this. And the reason we use polyurethane injection is because foam is not always available everywhere. You can't just go buy styrofoam and buy these big sheets like you guys can buy at Home Depot or buy in bulk in developed countries. But what you can do with this is ship a relatively small volume, these two liquids, A and B. Uh, they, they do a chemical reaction, it's an exothermic reaction, injecting the panels and it expands. So these these small barrels here, these 55 gallon drums are enough to make about 10 houses and you can ship it in that volume. And then next, uh, to become scalable, you can look at a hub and spoke model. So you have these roll formers, you have this raw materials coming in and you have some relatively uh, capital intensive equipment that need to be purchased, but you also have production rates that are very high. And so what this means is that you can centralize all of this, this, this manufacturing, and then have multiple spokes spread out <coughs> geographically where the houses are actually going to be built. 
So this prime factory in the middle can supply three different factories around, and these factories are going to be located very close to where they're being built. They are going to be injected there with the foam. That's what gives the volume to the shipping, and then built locally with local labor. <coughs> and then finally, the homes need to be easy and fast to build. So first, why should they be easy? And the driving reason started off principally because these are, uh, they began as donation homes that were built by volunteers. And so people are coming to Mexico or going to where the house is being built. They're not construction experts, and they need to be able to build this house <coughs> every week and do it so easily. Uh, and then the second is because a lot of these populations you serve, they don't have the capital means to invest in their own home. And what we've seen across the world in different government initiatives, if you take an underserved population and you make a development of homes, say you build 200 homes, and then you relocate this population and give them these homes for free, what you see is that the homes after five, you know, five months, a year, two years, the homes are abandoned, the homes are neglected, they're not maintained. And the principal reason here is because if you give something for free, if you don't feel a sense of ownership, then people aren't going to feel the need to maintain it. They're not going to have the pride to, to properly upkeep their home. <coughs> so if people can't afford to invest financially in their home, you have to find another way for them to feel invested. And the way that we did this was, uh, say you're receiving a home, the first thing is we're going to come to you, we're going to tell you that you've, you've been selected to receive a home, and uh, we're going to be here in three months, four months, we'll give them a date. Your responsibility right now is to take the, the plot of land where the home's going to be, you need to level it, you need to clear it, you need to compact the soil, you need to do everything to get this land ready to be built on, ready to have a concrete slab for it. And this is something that you can do with manual labor, this is something that's accessible, uh, something that, and it's also, it's also something that's a lot of work. And so this is one way that the family can, can grow what we call sweat equity, and that means by working on the house and by actually their investment is not financial, their investment is looking at a house and saying, and having the sense of accomplishment that they have built this house themselves. And then the second component of this comes back to the fact that it's easy to build. So while we're building these homes, the family themselves are working alongside putting together this home. And so they feel the sense of ownership that this is something that I made and something that I'm going to want to maintain.